Hey guys, Thunder E here, and uh, welcome to my gaming review of the Pixel 8 Pro. I'm here in lovely Barcelona, and I've taken some time to give you a gaming video on this device. Now, this is the latest Pixel device from Google, and I do have the bay color here, which looks really nice. Now, the one thing I want to mention on the Pixel is the display. Let's start off with that. Uh, this is a display with two 2400 nits brightness, super bright display. Whether it's outdoors or indoors, you're gonna get some really nice colors on this display. And yes, I will put that Superman wallpaper for you guys, for those who are looking for this. But back to gaming on this device. Now we have a device here that uh, in terms of display, it's got a refresh rate of 120 Hertz. It can go from 60 to 120 uh, with the adaptive refresh rate, but of course gaming will be, will be at 120 Hertz. Now, this is powered by the Tensor uh, G3 processor. It's the latest in the Tensor line. Looking at benchmarks, starting off with Geekbench 6, we've got a single core score of 1,733, multi-core score of 3,758. Now, how does it stack up against the iPhone? 15 Pro Max and the Galaxy S23 Ultra, both scores are lower. And it's actually a bigger gap with the multi-core scores for both devices with at least a 2000 gap and almost a uh, 4000 gap uh, with the iPhone. So you can clearly see there that there's some work, but it's still a huge improvement, especially on the single core scores. Now, when we go to GPU benchmark scores here for the Pixel 8 Pro, what do we get? Well, we have a score of 4,864, which is a huge gap in OpenCL scores compared to the Galaxy at over 9,000. And the iPhone, of course, is marks differently, of course, because it uses metal at 27,000. But this might be an indication of what heavy GPU use might look like with the Pixel 8 Pro. Now, when we look at 3D Max scores here, we do have an overall score of 2,329. And uh, you can see how it stacks up against other devices and against the Galaxy S23 Ultra. It is only better than 1% of Galaxy S23 devices overall. So that score is pretty low, but you know what? Let's decide by looking at some of the games we have to play. And we'll be recording those benchmarks using the built-in game dashboard uh, with the Pixel 8 Pro, which allows you to see your FPS on screen because my game bench uh, it doesn't actually work with Android 14 yet at this point. So let's jump into some of the games we would expect. Starting off with Call of Duty Mobile, this is the first time I was able to play on the highest settings for Call of Duty Mobile, Ultra, Medium, and this was great to see because I was able to get a solid, fresh 118 to 120 frames per second on there. Gameplay was really smooth, very, felt very comfortable, and uh, it felt really nice gaming on this device. So we got that re really smooth frame rate, and it was able to. It was good to see that a game like Call of Duty Mobile had such nice, clean gameplay on the Pixel 8 Pro. Now, moving over to PUBG Mobile, it's a game a lot of people play all around the world, and I want to check two of the main settings on there. So there's Ultra HD Ultra, uh, which is of course a high graphic intensive uh, setting for uh, PUBG Mobile. And this is standard across the board, we're getting 40 frames per second, which is similar to what you have on your Galaxy S23 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max, uh, uh, in terms of at least just the benchmarks there. So really, really nice, clean performance on there. Now, when we move over to um, uh, Extreme HDR, we also got some really nice frame rates. We saw it go uh, at 60 frames per second. It might have moved slightly higher than 60 in certain situations, but it did a really good job. Now, in terms of performance here, we've seen some really solid performance, but what about temperatures? Now, let's go back to Call of Duty Mobile. While we're playing Call of Duty Mobile, I noticed that it was running a little bit warm. Our temps were running between 99 to 100 uh, 101 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 36, 37 degrees Celsius, uh, roughly. And then with PUBG Mobile, we're getting it roughly around the same again, between 100 to 101. Um, and then of course, 36, 37 in terms of Celsius range. So that's temperatures there. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying that's what I noticed with this device. Now, before we get to PUBG Mobile and the temperatures there, let's take a listen to audio off this, especially gaming audio playing some of these games and also uh, just music off the Pixel 8 Pro.
So I think that actually sounded pretty good. I'm not sure how loud it is in terms of comparison to other devices. I've got this really high ceiling room. It's about maybe 18, 18 feet high. So uh, that still did a good job in a space and environment like this. Now moving over to PUBG Mobile, we're able to play PUBG Mobile what? at its max setting. Of course, playing with the uh, Tensor G3, and this is where the Tensor fails yet again. So with PUBG Mobile, stop it. Get some help. We'll add the max setting, 60 frames per second. As soon as you start playing, it drops down. It dropped down to about 28 frames. That was the lowest I got. And then it moved back up to the uh, to mid 40s. Now, when you're stationary and not in any active action environments, you can get 56 uh, frames per second, or at least if there's less particles or release uh, particulates around the scene, then you, you can get about close to about 50 to 54 frames per second. But on average, while gaming and while fighting enemies, I was getting between about 38 to about 42 frames per second. So not solid, especially while starting off the game. What we do notice is that when you're playing uh, Genshin Impact on other SOCs like the Snapdragon HN2 series or the Dimensity 9200, or even the Abionic chipsets from Apple, it starts off strong at 60 frames per second and then it gradually goes down to around the uh, mid to high 40s. That is what we usually get. Now, when it comes to this device, it's the opposite. It starts off at the low 20s and then kind of goes all the way up to about the mid 40s. Now, when it comes to temperatures on this device playing Genshin Impact, this is where we see temperatures rise. So it got up to about 108 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or about roughly 42 degrees Celsius uh, while playing for roughly around 30 minutes of gameplay. And this is because, of course, it can't handle the higher 60 frames uh, per second. So it's working much harder and we're still getting lower frame rates. Now, when it comes to gaming overall on this device, I think you are getting solid performance all around, whether you're playing your regular Android games, but remember Genshin, you do want to play at 30 frames per second uh, in terms of settings. Uh, I think this is pretty solid and it's better improvements. We're still not seeing the improvements when it comes to Genshin. So I hope that changes as it moves forward. I know this is not a focus that Google uh, tends to point out because they didn't talk about gaming on their press conference for the uh, Pixel 8 Pro, but it is still a solid performer. And also for those of you who are asking about your game streaming services, it works well, of, of course, as long as you have a good wireless connection. I wasn't able to set up emulators. I didn't have time because I was traveling and I am still traveling at this point in time. Uh, but let me know what else you would like to see from this device. I'll be doing a camera comparison coming up against the iPhone 15 Pro Max. There's some really interesting images as I go around Barcelona to see what is uh, just around the place here. It's a fun city and uh, honestly, if you guys have any questions or any comments, let me know. If you want to see more from the Pixel 8 Pro, leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.